So hi, I'm Greg West, and I'm a principal pre-sales engineer at Cambridge Semantics. So a little bit about our company here at Cambridge Semantics. We're, we're founded really by the, the union of two groups. The first group, uh, which has its origins at IBM, and they were working on using graph and semantic technologies. They founded the company around a dozen years ago. And then about four or five years ago, they acquired this group um, with origins in the TISA that have been working on building uh, a very scalable graph database. And when they've merged these products together, we've actually released uh, a couple different versions of, of our platform now. Uh, most recently, uh, Enzo 5.0 released in, in 2020. And it features this very scalable um, enterprise OLAP graph database engine to build uh, enterprise level knowledge graphs. And this is a quote from uh, one of our customers that really encapsulates the the problem statement that, that many of our customers see. Uh, integration being the, the key issue. And we're gonna really harp on that as we discuss um, you know, some of the, the different technologies that, that Anzo has. So what makes Anzo unique really when it comes to data integration is, is the fact that we use um, a knowledge graph in our approach. And there are numerous advantages, right, uh, to, to using knowledge graph. Knowledge graph. The first one is flexibility, um, whether that be uh, modifying the model or integrating new sources. Uh, a second really big advantage, and it's sort of a, a derivation of, of its flexibility, is the adaptability that it provides, whether that be um, answering unexpected queries, harmonizing data coming from disparate sources, or even taking just a, a, a really a, a subset of the information in the scary looking graph over here on the right, and making that available to a specific subset of users. And then the last thing, which we sort of covered in, in the first slides, is really the scalability of the knowledge graph. Anzo's architecture supports massive scalability uh, of, of data coming from numerous sources. And the, and the way Anzo works, really, is, is it's an overlay of your existing uh, data landscape, whether that be um, a relational database, files on the data lake, a document repository, and was able to connect to structured and unstructured sources and leverage data to build and suggest uh, a knowledge graph. And just a little bit, right, about the architecture that um, Anzo uses, right, when, it, when it's sort of overlying those sources and you kind of see them um, in, in, on the left on this particular slide. So Anzo has this process we called AMBA, where we, um, where we really construct the knowledge graph using some of the metadata from sources to, to, to actually um, sort of build a graph structure and suggest connections between those style of sources. And then we're able to serve that knowledge graph out to, to different um, endpoints and analytic tools, whether or not you wanna use a traditional BI tool or run machine learning on the output of the knowledge graph, Anzo supports that end-to-end -end workflow. And there's two real key points to this architecture that I want to uh, point out, and they're sort of in these underlying layers at the bottom. The first is that Anzo is cloud agnostic, and we deploy on all the, the, the public clouds, um, as well as um, on-prem um, infrastructures. And then the second thing is that Anzo leverages um, Kubernetes, right, for scalability. That's the scalability on, on ingest of structured and unstructured sources, as well as compute um, in terms of um, being able to harmonize and do in-memory transformations um, on the incoming data sources. So when we talk about a knowledge graph, I like to think about as a kernel to, to really several different use cases that are being deployed at scale. Uh, traditionally, some of Anzo's biggest customers and, and Cambridge Semantics' biggest customers were in, in pharmaceuticals, but we've been expanding rapidly into some of the other verticals that you're seeing here such as uh, government, healthcare, manufacturing, and financial services. So let's take a look at, at one of those use cases. So the FDA you know, actually has a, a tremendous wealth of data. And the fact of the matter is, is they're producing that in several siloed data products that they wanted to build into sort of a single view of a drug product. They had information coming from a source called Orange Book, which has patent information, on approved drug products. They also had something called drugs at FDA, which contains um, some of the specific molecules and, and your sort of 
how different drugs are being used at, at different dosages and forms. And then they have other sources um, such as um, FAIRS, which is the FDA's adverse event reporting system, clinicaltrials.gov, which ret returns all the clinical trial results for a uh, drug that is undergoing the approval process, as well as Daily Med, which contains unstructured data, uh, drug labels for those different drugs. And we really want to be able to harmonize those into one graph and, and really be able to do some analysis on that information. So just a little bit about how ANZO actually builds uh, a knowledge graph that's combining data from a few of these sources. So ANZO is actually able to leverage both metadata and data to build this, this knowledge graph. So you see this idea of a canonical product in this slide. It's, it's combining these, these two different um, rows coming from relational sources right, that have the same application number. So it can use um, sort of the, the application number field meta, in terms of metadata to, to harmonize those two sources, as well as some of the data coming from our, um, our label in daily med that is um, defining some of the um, actual treatment information of how a particular uh, drug is, is being applied. And that's being found by the, the label is being surfaced um, in an annotation um, coming from that unstructured source. So let's take a look at what ANZO actually looks like um, for this use case. So we're going to start here in, in a graph mart. And a graph mart is a construct um, within the ANZO platform where your data architects, your data engineers can actually build a knowledge graph um, from several of those sources. And think of it as a recipe um, where you're creating a data product and you're selecting um, several um, from several of your data sets to, to actually build, you know, select the components of your knowledge graph and then actually provide instructions on how you'd like to, to blend them together, which do you want to transform specific fields? Do you want to define um, matches between, um, you know, different sources? Well, you can do that all within this graph mark construct. So each one of these data layers is being um, activated into our in-memory graph database. And then there are some ELT uh, in-memory data transformations being applied to those sources. So you can see we have our orange book, we have our drugs at FDA, we have our fares, we have our clinical trials um, data sets here. And then we have what we call a blend layer where we define instructions that are sort of combining and transforming these data sets together. And we're building a, 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 you know, a knowledge graph that can be explored from these data sets. And we can actually look at the explore tab and it will show what that, um, what that knowledge graph looks like. What's cool is that it's showing each one of our different sources over here in, in a different color. And we have our sort of canonical product that's linking out to our different sources, um, sort of centered in the middle of the graph. ANZO can actually, um, there's, there's two ways, right, to combine sources. The user can go in and, and can, can actually define the instructions automatically, or ANZO can actually do some profiling on the metadata, suggest connections automatically from your different sources. Once you've defined what that knowledge graph looks like, there's a few different ways that you can expose that knowledge graph to an end user. Um, you can enable data on demand endpoints, or you can go into what we call um, ANZO high res, and um, so these data on demand endpoints uh, is an example here. Or you can go into what we call ANZO high res and explore uh, the knowledge graph using, um, using the access layer of the platform. And I'll look at that ANZO high res here briefly. And so high res is under the covers is generating Sparkle queries, and those results are being surfaced back to end users. So for example, if I click on one of these um, active ingredients for a product here, we're gonna have a Sparkle query run and generate, and then the results are being surfaced um, in a view and updating the table on, over here on the right. And under the covers, right, everything that's, that's sort of being done here is we're exploring a knowledge graph. So if I click here and I want to add a new column, I can go ahead, add a new column, say, hey, I'm not interested in the canonical product. I'm interested in something from our drugs at FDA, and I'm interested in 
the application number for this particular drug. And that will be available over here in this new column on the right. The fact that you're, everything's being sort of um, being pulled from this knowledge graph is actually sort of abstracted from end users. And we often use um, Anto Hi-Res as a sort of a data exploration tool um, before we expose that data as, a, as an endpoint to end users that are using um, their preferred BI and data science tools of choice. So in terms of the kinds of data, right, that you're able to um, combine in a data layer, there's, there's really a lot of optionality in how you can um, combine your, you sort of create these different data sets. Anto has the ability to um, sort of build models and, and, and ingest data from traditional sources using an onboarding workflow. Um, so, for example, we can go ahead here, we can just show onboarding structured and unstructured data and add a data source that is, you know, for example, a, a structured file coming from um, your, your data lake or a relational database. You'll see a subset of databases available here. And when Anzo um, creates a connection to one of those sources, it actually is able to extract the technical metadata from the source and build a, a graph model from that particular source. So if I look, for example, at our drugs at the FDA, it's actually able to automatically extract the different fields, the different primary keys, and use all of that technical metadata to automatically create a model from that source. And this is where we, we got our model from. The other option, uh, instead of sort of following the traditional onboarding approach, is that Anzo can connect um, to sources and directly load data from them or create um, views that are, are virtualizing your connection to that data source. And in general, right, when we're, when we're building a knowledge graph, we um, expect users to use some sort of hybrid depending upon the types of data source they're looking to connect to. If you have an API where the data is you know, sort of constantly changing, you may want to create a virtualized view. If you have a historical data set, you will want to let Anzo go ahead, connect to that data source, convert it, um, to RDF and store that um, for activation when necessary. So think of the graph mart, right, as this very powerful tool for creating a knowledge graph that you're then exposed to end users. So, you know, that was just a very brief overview of, of sort of Cambridge Semantics and, and our product Anzo. If you'd like to learn more, um, you know, reach out to our team and we'd be more than happy to, to schedule a follow-up session with you.